Okay. Um, thanks for joining me here. Um, this is my uh, my web video. Uh, replace your old file server with Office 365 SharePoint Online for a dollar per user per month. Um, and I'll show you how do I kind of come to that number of a dollar per user per month. Uh, Office 365 SharePoint Online uh, is actually five dollars per user per month by itself. Um, but I will go into why it's effectively a dollar and uh, why it should replace your file server. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we typically have set up file servers in the past, uh, why people seem to have concerns over SharePoint Online, and um, I'll talk about how people, they'll, they'll get their email moved over to Microsoft uh, Office 365, they'll, get the, they'll download the software that they get with the package, and then they stop there. They don't use SharePoint Online, which can absolutely replace the file server and do so much more. And it's not that complicated, especially if you're working with the right IT company. Um, so anyway, uh, so right there in front of you, there's our team. Uh, we're a Microsoft partner, a proud Microsoft partner, and they're our, our most important partner. Uh, and we are a small, uh, silver small and mid-market cloud solutions per, uh, partner. So we follow the, the Microsoft Cloud uh, stack, which is Office 365, the main components being Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Skype for Business, um, and uh, Microsoft Azure. So for those clients that need uh, applications moved in the cloud or servers moved into the cloud, they don't want to deal with hardware anymore, or need some of the um, uh, security services that you can get when you uh, get your system uh, your computer network and security setup in Microsoft Azure, we help customers with that. And then also the enterprise mobility suite, uh, which is Microsoft's security platform. Uh, me, I'm Wayne Chapin, uh, president and founder of Zerillion. I'm a Microsoft certified systems engineer uh, for a long, long time. Uh, I have a computer science degree from the University of Illinois Springfield. Um, I've consulted for close to 500 businesses through my career now. I spent three years as an internal IT person uh, with a great company uh, and then went off and, and uh, was a consultant uh, for, for a couple of years um, uh, and then went uh, and started Zerillion in 2002. And we service about 105 businesses in the area. Thousands of endpoints, lots and lots of servers, but in increasingly um, the data that used to be on a server now is is moved out into the cloud, and that's where uh, we work with clients pretty closely. And it's been interesting to see that progression over time. Um, we'll, we this year we'll install the the, uh, the lowest amount of servers that we've ever installed ever, and we're only install one email server on site. Everything else is going to be out in the cloud. So typically we get clients set up with that, get them set up properly, securely, get everything moved over, and then we support them. So um, going back to the olden days and actually the days that are that are, are with us still, it, it, people are used to having a map network drive. And I, I took a screen clip off of Google search. This isn't uh, any of our clients uh, network we're looking at here. But this is an example of a, a good typical one of somebody with a bunch of map network drives on their computer. They click on, you know, they have a K drive, an M drive, an S drive, whatever. And they go in there and there's a bunch of folders inside of there. And then there's documents inside those folders, Word docs, Excel docs, PDFs. Um, and uh, that's what they're used to working with. And so uh, when they think about SharePoint Online, they think, well, the perception is it's very complicated. I can't, it's not simple like Dropbox or box.com. Um, you know, and I even, I was one of those people uh, for a long time. And um, it began to feel very strange to me that we would set up people with all these Office 365 accounts, which in a lot of cases they were spending $12 a month, $20 a month. And they were using, you know, the email portion of it. They were using the Office desktop applications, um, maybe Skype, but they were not using um, SharePoint and they had it. And um, so I began to feel like this isn't making any sense. I, and even in Zerillion, we, we had our Office 365 account and we were using box.com. And I'm like, this is this doesn't, anyway. So I finally reached out to Microsoft, you know, and said, look, I, you got to help me with this because every IT guy that's been around for 10 years plus has probably at one time attempted to install SharePoint on a server at their site, gave it a shot and thought, wow, if I'm just trying to share files, 
it, does it need to be this complicated? Uh, that's crazy. And uh, I was one of those people too. So um, anyway, when I talked to Microsoft, one of their engineers, he's like, it's not complicated at all. Like, you know, let's, let's get you set up. And I thought, okay, fine, let's do it. And it, you know, the funny thing was um, it, it took five minutes. You know, we had like six folders I needed to create, uh, you know, a, a client folder, an HR folder, an accounting folder, um, a business folder, an operations folder. And then we set security groups for each one of those folders. And then we put people in the security groups who needed to have access to the particular folder. And that's how we controlled security. And there was a few things as far as nomenclature I, I had to understand, just a few key differences. And that was it. It was so simple. And we've been on it for a, a long time now. And it's, I cannot imagine going back, considering what I get now and knowing, to my opinion, how archaic uh, traditional file servers are. So we're fully managed over, uh, we're fully migrated over. Um, our collaborated folders are on SharePoint Online. And then um, I, each person has a, a business folder. It's their business documents. It's stuff they don't work with others on. It's just their stuff. So for me, for example, I, I might work on a contract, um, you know, and I'll have that in OneDrive for business, but when it's done, then I'll move that into the SharePoint client folder or a business folder. Um, and, uh, and then multiple people can access that. So some SharePoint online stats. Share, uh, company SharePoint folder storage uh, is, is huge. It's one terabyte. Um, it used to be far less than that, but Microsoft upped that. And so um, it's a tremendous amount of storage in SharePoint with a high amount of functionality that you don't get when you have a file server. And then each user gets a OneDrive for business folder. And all, they, each person gets a one terabyte of space. So the company wide starts out with one terabyte of space. Then each user gets a terabyte as well. And some of the things that are fantastic about it is you get automatic document versioning. So this, every time a document gets saved, SharePoint behind the scenes keeps a version of that document. You didn't have to call it version one, version two, version three. SharePoint just keeps track of that. And I'm going to show that in a demo. It used to be that if I needed to go back and get a previous version of a document, I'd have to go talk to the IT guy or a user would have to go talk to the IT guy, uh, ask them to run the backup and then restore the file. Uh, all that goes away with SharePoint. It's much simpler and it's user controlled. Um, you have a recycle bin. So when, when people would blow away documents or folders in uh, on, a, on a network file server, it was gone and there was no recycle bin. So what we'd end up having to do is again, go, go back to the backup system and restore files or folders. You get then another thing is you get doc, document indexing. It's like a Google search for your document libraries. So, you know, for those to, for those companies out there that that are watching this right now that have tens of thousands of documents inside their file server and documents that go back years, decades, and they don't even remember the names of the documents anymore. They kind of know maybe what customer it was about or the name of a person and maybe a file, kind of a file type or maybe some keywords that might've been in the document. The document, the indexing function inside of SharePoint is a godsend and I will show that uh, as well. Um, you have full document access tracking. So whenever you're working inside of SharePoint, who was viewing documents, editing documents, deleting documents, um, who did anything with the documents, it's all there, it's all tracked because you can't go in and do stuff with it unless you're logged in uh, and, and accessing those documents. And also it's pretty neat, you can set up external use rights. So my accountant has access to our accounting folder, which makes total sense, but she doesn't use Office 365. She, uh, she also doesn't, uh, doesn't have an account that we gave her. So we just set her up without having to pay for anything extra. So she can go ahead and get into um, uh, our accounting folder, uh, just using her regular email address. And, uh, and everything's tracked as well. So she has her account, her password, and everything that she's doing is tracked, but she's not you know, somebody inside of our company. Um, and, and those external use rights are really handy when um, I don't track versions of documents anymore. So we get automatic document versioning SharePoint. So every time it's saved, a new version is, is created, but I can also just send people links outside of the company and say, they either have view access or edit access to the file and they can just click on the link and they can do whatever they need to do, but they're not like downloading a copy, making changes, then emailing it back to me and I'm keeping track of stuff. We don't do that anymore. I don't do that. Um, data loss prevention. So 
Um, whenever you have a situation where you want to know that uh, if there's sensitive, if you're a company that holds sensitive documents, you know, that have financial information, tax ID, social security numbers, um, or like the case is really in password information or, or detailed network information. Um, if you want to set a policy saying that uh, if we have documents in there and they're not encrypted, then that document has to be flagged and a manager gets notified and that document gets encrypted. So if you want to make sure that, that you don't have data loss in the organization, you have those proper security policies in place, it just comes with, with uh, SharePoint Online. And lastly, you have built-in malware and virus scanning. Whenever documents put into SharePoint Online, it's scanned for viruses. With a file server, we actually have to put antivirus on there uh, or depend on antivirus for the, the uh, client computers. And then also you can set up retention settings that, again, don't involve a backup system so that if a um, if somebody goes in and, and decides to delete a folder or files and they, they intended to do it maliciously, um, you know what, that's fine because uh, we have set retention policies on your system that anything gets deleted, even if it gets removed out of the recycle bin, um, it still can be hold out, held on for 30 days or 60 days. So I'm going to go in and show a little demo of SharePoint Online. There. So I'm going to show you what our, um, our team site looks like. So a team site would be the main folder inside of SharePoint. And uh, I click on site it, and then I have our main client folder. It just shows up as the default. You can configure it to whatever, whatever you want. But over on the left then, you can see um, all these different um, folders, accounting folder, business folder, client service, finance department, management, marketing, operations, you know, projections. And then um, inside there, we'll have uh, additional uh, data as far as other folders and documents. So first I'll go into the accounting folder. And in here, um, I can show you where we can set up those permissions. So inside of our accounting folder, which we wouldn't want everybody to have access to, we have team site owners, which are basically the owners of the company. And then we have an accounting folder and it's an accounting group, sorry. And inside there are two people. Um, Kay Chapin, one of the owners, and also uh, Elizabeth Melito. She's our accountant, and she does not have a, an account here in Office 365, but we gave her outside access just using her email address, and that's how she authenticates, and now she has access, and anything she works on here uh, is tracked. And also, if I wanted to go into, um, for example, the marketing folder. Oh, I'm in the marketing group, apologize. If I go in the marketing folder, and I want to go into um, here. Let's go into marketing plans because I know there is a a document in there with a lot of versions. So here is the uh, postcards marketing budget 2016. And let's see if we got some different versions. If that's been saved over a bunch of times here. Uh, no, that one hasn't. Oh, wait, marketing plan here. So you can see that here's our, the, the company marketing plan. <clears throat> and every time it was saved, a version was kept of it. And if somebody, if this was any kind of document and uh, uh, somebody said, wow, you know, I, this, this document now, it's, it's really messed up. I need the way this document looked from uh, March 23rd, 2016. They could just go back into versions here, click restore, and would take the document back to that point. Um, and that's all it take, all it took. And prior to using SharePoint, um, typically for most IT people uh, and their end users, that would be going back to a backup system and uh, restoring uh, the file to get it back to that certain date, if they could even recover back to that point. Um, because a lot of IT, the backup systems that are out there, uh, we're talking about a week or two, maybe a month, maybe a couple months if they have something more of an advanced system. Um, but here, all we did is we just rolled back the user just did this themselves. They didn't have to call IT and uh, went back and took care of that themselves. Also, anything that's deleted. So if we delete, delete documents, there's a recycle bin. 
anything that gets deleted, we uh, we keep track of who deleted it, when they deleted it, and if we need to go, if we think, oh shoot, we didn't mean to delete that, or somebody deleted it and they shouldn't have, we can just go right here, select the item, and then click the restore selection. And one of the uh, things that I think is is really nice too is the fact that I can go over here and I can uh, type in. Um, do a search. I can say, I'm going to type in a document and look for documents that have Wayne in them. So um, here, anytime a document was uploaded in SharePoint Online, the the name of the file was indexed. The documents, uh, all the words inside the file were indexed too. And so what happened here is uh, I did a search across my whole document library, which I have access to everything here. But uh, you know, there's Wayne. They pulled up this uh, file here with Wayne in the title. And it pulled up this other file uh, file here with Wayne that's actually in uh, the name of the document. But uh, this really helps when you're kind of think hazy about what was the name of the document, or I don't even remember some of the details, but a few key words, and you can pull that stuff up. And then next thing you know, you got essentially a Google search. And you can start to narrow that down on the side if I wanted to choose uh, who created the account. I remember, oh yeah, it was Kate Chapin, and you know, it was a PDF document. I could start to narrow those things down really fast. I just want to make sure that I went over each one of the items here. So those are the main uh, the main items inside of um, SharePoint Online that I want to go over. And I think it's what really shows now is the last piece here is what an amazing value it is because now um, you know to set up a file server for a company on the lower end we're probably talking somewhere. Eight to ten thousand dollars. More typical is somewhere in the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range, and and then um, from there we got to have a backup system, and you know we got that thing takes quite a bit of maintenance, and it can have hard drive issues. I mean, I've I've seen all sorts of things. We I've seen it where you somebody's had a, we have a brand new server, and we've had multiple hard drives fail because typically when there's failure on hard drives from the manufacturer, it's it, it's they come in groups, so. That being said, um, consider what what you don't get with a regular file server if you have one now or you're looking to upgrade. Hopefully your IT professional is talking to you about these options, especially with Office 365. They're rock solid, they work fantastic. Um, and also I, I wanted to show that, uh, this was the last thing, I, that for those people who are used to working with map drives and they're comfortable doing that, with Windows 10, you can still have that experience. So I was showing you uh, working through documents inside of a web portal. But uh, another thing you can do is we can map, uh, essentially it looks like map drive. So I have uh, my clients folder here. I'll pick my marketing folder that I was, I was uh, showing you earlier. So right here, I have that, I mapped it. So it looks like a map drive. It just says SharePoint marketing. And here's all those folders inside here. And so for people that are, don't want to go in the portal, they just want to work in a, in a, a like a, a map drive format, with Windows 10, you can do it. You can do it with Windows 7 too, but Windows 10 has native integration to Azure Active Directory. And so uh, that allows me to log in one time on my Windows 10 computer. I'm authenticated and then um, I have access without to whatever I am supposed to have access to in Office 365 without having to re-log in all the time. On a Windows 7 computer with SharePoint Online, uh, you will have to keep re-authenticating yourself um, after you've rebooted your computer or if you've been away um, and you haven't done anything on uh, connecting to the portal for a while. But it's a very smooth experience inside of Windows 10. So, and I highly recommend you, you take advantage of the upgrade that is free up through uh, July 30th. But here I am working live. I'm just working through my internet connection and, um, you know, clicking around on files and it's pretty snappy. You know, uh, I don't have a, anything super special on my internet connection because uh, we don't host anything here because here at Zerillion, I don't have any servers anymore. Um, anyway, so, but, uh, but for people who, um, would, if you just wanted SharePoint by itself, you know, you could get SharePoint online plan one and it's $5 a user per month. If you wanted to get Exchange email online up by itself, it's $4 a user per month. But here's the interesting thing. You see those plans up there, SharePoint, $5 a user per month, Exchange online, 
uh, $4 a user per month. You can get Office 365 Business Essentials. It's the most basic business plan uh, Microsoft bundles together. You get SharePoint Online, you, you get the one terabyte business folder, you get Exchange Online, each user gets a 50 gigabyte, gigabyte mailbox. You get Skype, um, you uh, get the Office web app. So right now we're working on PowerPoint Online. I'm not using the PowerPoint desktop app, which I certainly have access to. Um, but I really like the web apps too. They're quick, easy. I get in, I do what I need. It just stores everything automatically. I don't even click save. It just keeps saving stuff automatically for me. Um, but you get all that for $5 per user per month. That blows my mind. You know, so if you're a company with 15 employees or 20 employees, um, you can get all of this functionality that you used to pay so much money for. Uh, you don't even have, and you don't have to have any hardware in sight. Um, you can get all this functionality, 20 employees, it's going to cost them $100 per month. It's amazing. And if you're a company just starting out and you've got three employees, it'll be 15 a month. It's amazing. And you can scale so easily uh, in this kind of system. And then I also threw the other plan out there, which is Office 365 Business Premium. Um, that's the most common plan. I mean, if, if I had to zero in, if you go on the Microsoft's website for Office 365, it can be very overwhelming. There's so many plans and Microsoft keeps adding so much in there. It's amazing. And that's why I get excited about it because of all the things they're doing in there, the, where they're taking this platform and how much momentum that it has out there in the market. But anyway, Office 365 Business Premium is the most common plan because it comes with the Microsoft Office desktop applications. So you can use the, you know, the, the full version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and that sort of thing. So, and that one's just $7.50 more a month than getting the business essentials. So it's a lot of IT power for very little money. And so uh, if it's something interesting to you and, uh, you know, definitely talk to your IT professional about it, whether that's a consultant or you're an, a, 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 an internal IT person, um, or if you do want to talk to us, we'd be happy to talk to you and I can take you through it. You know, whether you want to use us on the consulting side or whether you just want to, you know, uh, you know, pick our brains about, uh, you know, things you're considering, we can help you really narrow that down really fast um, and, uh, and, and, and give you the direction and also for those people who are uncomfortable setting these things up or maybe they don't understand SharePoint online, we can make it really easy. So anyway, thanks for listening. I hope this was uh, uh, beneficial. Uh, there's certainly information about us and uh, if you want to give us a call, uh, thank you very much for your time.